Hello folks, this is Willie, and today we are going to do a little bit of experimenting and play with some inlay. So what I've got is some veneer, um, different material, white oak, uh, mahogany, um, I can't remember what the other one is. Oh, what do I got here? Uh, let's see. I got some red oak, but uh, I think what we're going to do is the white oak along with uh, the mahogany, and we're going to see what we can get out of it. So, um, I had to disconnect my mouse. I'm not exactly set up back to where I was at one point in time as far as my studio, but we're getting there and um we'll take this out here and bring you over into light burn so whenever you're doing an inlay what you need to do is essentially take your artwork that you have and i will actually control z out of this and show you my steps There we go. Almost. There we go. All right, so this was the original image after I traced it. The problem with this, if I tried to do an inlay at this point in time, is that it would cut out each and individual piece here, and we don't want that. So we're going to go ahead and draw an outside line. And so what we're going to do is we're going to do an offset. And we're just going to bring that offset out to a point where all my lines are touching and close everything up a little bit. Okay. So that brings my outside offset out. All right. Now we're going to go in to the image itself. And we're going to select this outside line. And we're going to change it to a cut. Just like that. Alright. So this is going to all be cut out right here. And then this inside here is going to actually be marked. Okay. And so we're going to bring this image down to a little bit smaller. Before we do that, we need to group everything together. So we'll go ahead and select everything, group it together. And let's go ahead and shrink it down to a manageable level. There we go. And we'll hit P, get that in, and center it up. I'm having to use my mouse key or my touch screen touch mouse instead of my normal ball mouse all right so now we have our image let's go ahead and set up our cuts and layers so what i have found with veneer folks is that you really don't need a lot of power in here now for those of you that doesn't know about uv you don't you're not able to adjust your power all right that that is not adjustable so what you need to do is to adjust your speed your frequency and your q pulse along with your lpi to get the results that you want so i've got my speed set at 1200 my frequency is at 45 my q pulse is one and my lines or lpi are 800. um you can turn up your LPI a little bit. Um, I've already discovered this, so we're going to bring that up to a thousand. And uh, my speed's just about right. I go. I went ahead and I'm um, running on my cross hatch on, and uh, so we're good there. Uh, we need to make sure to turn the output on. All right, so now what's going to happen is it's going to engrave on the inside and then cut that out. We don't want to move this after once we've got it set. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to lock this for now. 
Well, we don't need to lock it. Just be careful and don't move it. All right, and let's go back over to the laser and frame everything up. All right. Um, I will change you over to, whoops, I got to get my, there we go. Take this off here. And interestingly enough, I got a triangle. So we're going to go ahead and run that. So the process here is you're actually going, before it's all said and done with, you're going to have three pieces of material. Um, this is our light outside cut. And then inside of that, we are going to have our outside of that, we're going to have our outside border. And then that is going to mount onto your back piece. As you can see, it really doesn't take that long. Okay, so now I'm going to have to ask you folks your pardon. Uh, for those that don't know that I had a uh, little bit of an incident and broke my back last year. And so some nerve damage and stuff and I move pretty slow. All right, so let's uh, go over here and change some pieces out. All right, so we did our inside. And this is what it kind of looks like. Okay, now we're going to do our outside. And just to kind of keep things going in the same direction, we're going to go with a little bit darker material.
Oh, come on. And of course, when you're on camera, nothing really works right. I apologize. All right, so we've got this inset here, and we're gonna bring it into this material here. So now, let me switch you back over to my display. And we'll close this out. And we want to work with just this outside line. So all we got to do is in our cuts and layers, turn this off. And then we're going to draw a border around this material here. So we're going to go ahead and use our circle tool. And even though it's not going to be a circle, uh, let's go ahead and use our selection tool and bring this up a little bit. Maybe this down some, and then we're going to select everything and we are going to use our a line at line center and a line H center and I don't like that actually um, whoops control Z something you got to be careful about let's uh, open this up a little bit okay so all we're going to do is we're going to cut this outside line and then we are going to cut this line here. Now it is going to cut this other black stuff, but that's not a big deal. It's not going to show up in the system anyway. All right. So all we're worried about is this outside cut. And then this one here is going to be our border. All right, so let's go back to our laser and frame this up. And uh, hush. Get back down here where I can. Oops, wrong one. I apologize, folks. There we go. And we'll go ahead and set this up. Okay, now we can go ahead and start this. Again, it's going to try to cut that in that very center part, but it's not a big deal and it's just easier to go ahead and let it do that than trying to delete that part of it out. All we're worried about is that outside line. Now, as you work with this and you fine tune your laser, you may find that you need to adjust your offset. Um, working with different materials, uh, for example, leather, and you're trying to do this, leather is going to swell a bit whereas wood's not. So you probably will need to adjust your offset a bit to make everything come together like you want. Um, but this is pretty close. Um, so I think we should be all right, uh, but we'll check it out once everything's finished. And you know, your choice of wood is completely up to you. You can go light, dark, and back to light again, or however you want to do it. All right, so we have that one. Now let's go ahead and do our 
outside mounting border. Now I like to use the hardest material I can find um, because it's going to offer the most tensile strength. So for example, this mahogany is pretty stiff, pretty hard, even though it's the same thickness. So it's gonna offer a lot more strength as a backboard, all right? So now our next project is to just get us a piece out of here that we're going to cut out. Now your backboard can be anything, okay? Uh, the whole idea here is that you're setting this into it or setting it on top of it. So it's going to be the same size as your, uh, so I'll show you, you're going to see. All right, so we're going to cut two of these pieces out. Actually, I missed a step. That's what I did. Okay, hold on there. Okay, so we have our circle here. And... Well, no, you know what? I'll, I'll do this this way. I've already started this way, so I'll keep going. So we are actually going to go with a light. Nice thing about this veneer, it doesn't take any special tools, just a simple razor knife will work fine. Okay, now let's go back into our display. Come back here. All right, so now we have our circle cut out. We want to create a foundation for all of this to go into. So we're gonna go ahead and just use a square tool and we're gonna draw a square around all of this. And again, you can adjust this as far as your size. Uh, kind of set it down into here, bring this out just a hair, bring this in down here and All we're worried about now is these two lines. So we will go ahead and H center and V center. And let's frame this out. Hopefully I didn't get it too big. You don't need to see me crippled up. Okay. All right, so now we're going to <clears throat> trade this out for this piece. Sorry about that, didn't mean to shake it around. All right. So remember, even though you're showing the outside square, um, it's just because I haven't Okay. 
So what we're going to cut is the square and the circle for our first. Whoops, stop. Yeah, okay, that's right. We can actually take this out so we're not even worried about it. Right, I'm sorry, I took that center image out and just doing those two. It wouldn't hurt anything, but it just makes it a lot easier. Now what you could have done if you really wanted to was to lay that center image in and it would have cut out all of the little detail on the inside of the material and then you could have laid those in and laid those in and really made it pop. Um, I can't do that at this time, folks. My hands are not on my fingers. Um, just I can't I'm not capable of doing it at this point in time so I apologize for that this UV laser loves this veneer I mean it works really fast and uh, once you have your offsets and everything set up uh, and dialed in it can do really well all right so we have that backboard done now all we need to do is to come back up here close this and take this out now what you could do if you were doing some type of production is to have each one of these as its own layer and then you could simply turn it on and off without ever having to move it but this is just a one one off so i don't have to worry about that so we'll take this out and now all we're going to do is cut our outside square so we'll frame that back up and i will take you back to the camera So in case you didn't notice something that I just did, okay, this first piece of dark wood, uh, I'm going to bring your camera back up here where you can see. So this first piece of dark wood that I cut, I cut my length in with my grain. The second one, I'm cutting it opposite so that whenever I use it as the back piece, it's going to add that tensile strength once everything is glued together. Okay. And so we will cut our square. Now they make a specific veneer glue, glue that you can use 
Um, I am just using some simple Elmer's rubber cement. Um, if I was doing something bigger, I would probably use the true veneer glue. Uh, this should work okay, though. All right, so what we're cutting out right now is just the back piece. This gives us the foundation to lay all of our inlay in. Okay, and let's get everything laid up. All right, so I'll bring you back over here on the camera. So we start out with our back piece here. And then this piece is going to go over the top of the, that piece. And again, <clears throat> you will notice, uh, you really probably can't see it on here, but um, I have my grain running this way on the back and the grain running this way on the front. And that's going to offer some strength to this total build. <clears throat> the next is our inlay foundation, which is going to go inside. Like that. And then got to be real careful with this smaller stuff this is going to go in on that all right so let's glue everything up again folks I have to ask for your patience because I have really bad fuddle fingers right now. All right, so um, one of the things that I found was at the dollar store, I can buy these little plastic containers and they have a little small spout and um, they're great for glue application. Um, I got my uh, Elmer's in this one and then this here is actually a leather application glue um, works really well too um, so probably work really well on the wood but I've never tried it before alright so uh, now all we're going to do is we're going to lay our glue down in our foundation if I can uh oh unstop my tip oh do 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 that figures There she goes. Okay. Now you don't need a whole lot, but do remember that certain types of wood is thirstier than other types of wood if that's the right word. Something you can do, folks, to stop these tips from getting clogged up, and it's something I didn't do, 
is to actually squeeze the bottle while it's up and then come over on the side and kind of pop it and that will help pull that glue out of that tip all right close it up keep it from gelling up on me and you know there are a lot of tools out there for spreading glue but my favorite is just a little scrap piece of wood so we're just going to work this glue into our edges as close as we can uh, you need to get for veneer you really need to be uh, you really need to get all that edge your edge is the most important on this veneer and if you have a little bit too much it's okay because you can transfer it to the other materials just try not to get it all over the table like I just did or have some paper or something down so that you don't make a mess that you have to clean up later and if you were one of those glue eaters in school I wouldn't suggest you do it with this stuff because this is not your white glue so strong all right wow getting a buzz on this all right so now we're going to lay our top piece in on this don't press until you're ready to you got everything lined up so we're just barely touching our edges here just to kind of get it laid in okay and yeah i'm gonna have a little bit outside but it's all right just take and run your finger down there or a cotton swab or whatever you want to use all right now we got that outside now we're going to go ahead and run this here now be aware that you know um in veneer you have a pretty side and not so pretty of a side a lot of times so kind of look at your grain run it in the light see which side you want to use um with the exception of your centerpiece you can kind of make that selection but if you don't do that whenever you lay your centerpiece in you're in trouble okay and we got this in now we're going to put our centerpiece in by the way folks the higher your dpi the better your cut's going to be just to let you know okay I right, didn't sound right. Um, your your offset. You want you want the lowest offset, the tightest offset you can get. Okay. Got a little bit crazy with my glue, but not bad. Now, when you do these, you're going to want to put them underneath some pressure, some type of pressure plate. 
uh, and let them set up in a pressure plate. But, it still looks pretty cool. I'm trying to hide that light so you can actually see what's going on. There you go. So, I want to thank Altian Laser for sponsoring our channel. And to remind you folks that we have teamed up with Altian to offer you the opportunity to lease lasers if you need to, lease financing. And of course, we also sell, you know, sell the lasers outright. Same price as Haltian, uh, but uh, in buying directly through us, it offers also the supplemental support and um, helps me bring more of these videos out to you. So think about that, and I appreciate your time. See you next time. Bye.